a fourth year PhD student at USC working with uh, Nate Fast and Jesse Graham at Utah. Uh, and if I were looking at this slide and I were you guys, I'd be wondering what is transhumanism? And I'm really glad you asked. Uh, transhumanism is a cultural and intellectual movement that advocates integrating humanity with advanced technology to transcend our biological limitations. So anything from digital implants to advanced prosthetics, genetic engineering to brain machine interfaces, transhuman technologies promise to make human beings faster, stronger, more resistant to disease, longer lived, and even more intelligent. So I'm not exaggerating when I say that transhumanism kind of promises to reshape all aspects of human life, from the physical to the psychological. A lot of this may sound like science fiction, but actually is increasingly pervasive in many contexts. And while you may be displeased to have a coworker promoted ahead of you because of work performed with cognitive enhancers, you might be happy to see our military benefit from, from every unfair advantage that tech might have to offer. So uh, the morality of this uh, transhumanism movement has been mostly so far debated in expert circles, philosophers and bioethicists, uh, kind of arguing back and forth over whether this is good for humanity, um, but the fundamental moral psychology has been relatively unexamined. Uh, we think that a theories of moral pluralism, such as moral foundations theory, that suggests you know, we have multiple types of moral intuitions selected in response to adaptive uh, social pressures in our environment, uh, might shed some light on how various and even conflicting moral intuitions might be raised uh, by different types of technologies, and transhumanism is really a perfect place to study the intersection of technology and moral intuition. Uh, in this way. So what do you think about this movement that promises to make us one with technology? Think about that for a second, because that's exactly our research question. Uh, when and why do people support or reject transhumanism? And I'll explain a little bit and how three studies we address this question. So study one, we kind of got at general attitudes about transhumanism, positivity, negativity, ambivalence. Uh, we also asked people to submit all the open-ended arguments they could in favor of and against transhumanism. And we coded for those arguments uh, based on their reference to different types of foundational moral intuitions. So what we found was that people, these were college students, you know, probably more with it, more connected in terms of technology. They're more positive than negative, but more ambivalent than positive. So clearly conflicting intuitions are going on. Uh, when arguing for transhumanism, uh, these students tended to overwhelmingly reference arguments based on care, compassion, alleviating harm and suffering. But when arguing against it, uh, in addition to concerns about uh, harm down the road, uh, they also you know, worried about exacerbating existing inequalities, uh, you know, oppressing autonomy, uh, and violating the purity of human nature. And in fact, uh, Moral Foundation's purity scores were the strongest predictor of attitudes predicting negative attitudes, suggesting that intuitions about purity and, and human nature uh, might play a strong role in how people react to these technologies. Uh, based on the arguments we got, we thought uh, you know, the support will be strongest when this technology serves the function of restoring people from a deficit to the human baseline, and support will be a lot weaker or rejection will be higher uh, when technology is used to augment human potential beyond what is natural. So restorative tech is, is more commonplace in medical contexts, cochlear implants, brain machine interfaces for uh, people who suffer from paralysis, for instance. Augmentative tech, uh, less commonly known, but still actually increasingly prevalent. Uh, we have, for instance, the first ever computer-mediated brain-to-brain communication, uh, military exoskeletons that enable increased load with less fatigue, uh, and tiny magnetic implants in your fingertips that can let you perceive magnetic fields with a wave of your hand and also pick up tiny objects. And of course, because of the way that electricity transduces to magnetism, eventually you could attach any kind of electrical signaling device, say a Wi-Fi detector, to that finger, and you could feel literally where the Wi-Fi is strongest in the auditorium. So that's why someone might actually want that. So, so in study two, uh, we frame transhumanism as either restorative or augmentative, and we, we test people's uh, attitudes about its morality specifically, and we measure MFQ, moral foundations, again. Uh, what we find is that uh, augmentative tech is seen as uh, more immoral. We also find uh, that purity scores are still across the board, regardless of framing, predict immorality. Um, but care-based uh, intuitions only predict immorality in the augmentative condition. In fact, it's a slight negative relationship between those intuitions and immorality in the restorative condition. Finally, uh, we took this from the general movement level to a specific technology, transcranial direct current stimulation, which runs a weak current through the brain to enhance cognition, learning, skill acquisition. This has been peer reviewed. Uh, and uh, we had people uh, frame it as either uh, restorative, taking people with limitations to baseline or augmentative, and also as either wearable or embeddable under the skull uh, to tap those purity intuitions a little more. 
Uh, again, we find main effects for both augmentation and embedment, suggesting increased perceived immorality, but this is really being driven by the interaction, suggesting that augmentation frame technologies are most perceived as immoral when they're also embedded. Again, purity predicts uh, perceived immorality, um, but once again, uh, care type intuitions as well as fairness intuitions tend to predict uh, perceived immorality only for augmentative technology, suggesting worry about harm and exacerbating inequalities. So key takeaways, augmentation is seen as more immoral than restoration. Purity intuitions tend to dominate regardless of framing because these things are seen as kind of unnatural. Uh, and there's lots of directions that take this research. Uh, some of it we're already exploring. But I want to thank you very much for your attention and get to any questions that you might have. Hey, um, I just have a question about how you framed augmentation versus restoration because as soon as you frame something as augmentate, mm -hmm. augmentative and restorative, you've created a di dichotomy, right? But what is restorative and so what is augmentative? That's augmented. a great question. Uh, so we talk about, uh, say, taking someone who has cognitive limitations uh, and bringing them up to sort of, you know, average baseline or versus just taking someone with normal ability uh, to an enhanced level of function. Uh, and that's typically how we would frame it. So in your study, did you tell them what normal was? Uh, like no, no we, let, no, we let them infer uh, okay, what that so might they, be. Yeah. They just have to come up with their own. Yeah, so they, this is based on whatever they construe that to be. What, what is deficit, what is normal, right? Awesome. All right, thank you very much. Yeah.